It's that time of year, Floridians. Hurricane season. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can get a little intimidated by all of the things that I am supposed to be doing to prepare. But to simplify what needs to be done outside your home to prepare your landscape for hurricane season, mm -hmm. our friend Dr. Whitney Elmore is back from the Pasco County Extension Office to help. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, too. So you know I dread this. I hate talking hurricane season. No. This Buckeye still I don't still think anybody gets, enjoys it. You know. Even if you're from Florida, you don't enjoy it right but you know there are some things I think most people tend to think about when they're preparing their landscape especially if they hear a storm is coming right that, that's, that's when, when we, you do it. that's when we gear up right and we get concerned but you know there are some simple things making sure that we're taking down hanging pots and you know bringing any of our potted plants either up real close to the house or indoors if we've got a safe space for them removing the trampolines and those kinds of things that can get windborne and Number one, they can do some damage, but they also can end up, you know, even a swing set can end up in some of our lakes and reservoirs, and that can cause some pollution issues down the road. So there's a lot of things that we tend to, to notice outside from time to time, but oftentimes we tend to forget about the landscape, trees, and shrubs, okay. and how to kind of prep. So what should we be doing now before we are in the, the cone of uncertainty exactly. that sometime will probably happen this because season? Because who has time to run out there and try to take down a limb <laughs> when you know it's bearing down, right? <laughs> That's why I'm yelling at my husband today. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's on the honeydew <laughs> list for the hurricanes, right? But what we need to be doing is going out and checking for any branches that are hanging out from a tree over okay. the house, okay, over your cars. I think most people would notice that. But we really need to be paying attention to that canopy over all and looking for branches that are diseased and dying starting to turn brown where everything else is kind of green or broken because those could obviously become a projectile and they can end up going through a window ending up in the house doing damage to the roof some other things to think about too are making sure that you're cleaning out your gutters oh yeah because if we don't Good clean reminder. out the gutters we can get some flooding back into the roof of the house mm -hmm. in that way so there's a lot of these things that we might not necessarily think of right off the bat that can help us start to prepare. You can also look at, and what I would always recommend, if you're gonna be working especially with a large tree and you need to take down a branch, talk to, hire a certified arborist, a certified arborist that is licensed and insured, mm -hmm. that knows what they're doing, interview them, get a few references if you need to, and even and get a few quotes for the jobs early on. I mean, you know, they get really Again, busy. don't wait. They get really busy. The phone starts ringing within a few days of a hurricane. They're not going to be able to get to you in those cases. Get to them early on. Have them come out and talk to you how you can structurally prune, and this takes a certified professional to do this right, structurally prune your trees where they can actually withstand more wind Oh. and act as windbreaks around your property at the same time. Hey, speaking of, we only have about a minute left here, and I want to get this idea because I feel like there, and I see this in my own neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets, you know, like the hurricane cut, or they yes. trim, you know, so much of their palm trees. Mm -hmm. What it's do we a big need mistake. to know? It is a, it's, it's always a, big a mistake. mistake. Really? I, it, like with any other plant, if you've got branches that are broken, Okay, mm -hmm. you can remove those, those fronds. Do we but like what you, we're seeing here? We love what we're seeing here in this particular picture. This palm is actually in its very normal state here. And a lot of people think that they need to remove all of those bottom fronds like you see in this uh -huh. picture here. And what they're doing is they are weakening the structural integrity of that palm. They are starving it, number one, because, I mean, if you look here, yeah. this, this palm frond is very, very bright green. But in other cases, we see folks trying to remove, especially prepping for a hurricane, fronds that have some yellow, maybe even some brown. This is nutrient that that palm needs to survive. And we will cause it to begin to starve and we will weaken that bud right at the worst time when that wind is coming through, snaps off and you have killed your palm. That's the only growing point there. The uh, okay. other issue is we make these weak and they do not provide us with wind protection around our homes. If we have pruned these properly, and what I mean by properly is if the frond is broken, 
take it off. Okay. If there is any amount of green or yellow in that frond, leave it alone. That's a despite, nutrient. Resource. Despite what you see neighbors doing, it is yes, incorrect. It Whitney, is we are out of time. Great to see you. Yeah, As you always, too. you can check out the Pasco County Extension Office for more information too. And we hope you stay right there because we've got more Morning Blend in just a second.